Hello everyone! Today we will be taking a closer look at how collisions work and how to set up custom ones in Unreal Engine. As an example, I've imported this hallway mesh here, and we can see when I try to go through it that I'm getting stuck on the mesh collision for some reason. Opening up the Show dropdown, we can go down here and choose to see collisions. And we noticed in the wireframe that the collision of the hallway is pretty much encapsulating the entire mesh as one big block, meaning that there's no opening in it and we can't walk through. Let's move over to the mesh editor by double clicking the asset. Here we can get a better view of what's going on and what to do next. Here we will have a look at the different collision options we have available to us. And first off is the simple collision. Again, let's open up the show menu and you can find checkboxes for both simple and complex collision views. Let's view the simple one as this is what will be used to calculate player collision. As mentioned, we can see that the generated simple collision is pretty much a large box around the mesh, meaning we can't enter it in game. Now, let's have a look at the complex collision instead. If we check the complex collision option as well, we can see that we do have another collision mesh ready. This one is generated from the mesh topology, so we will follow the mesh exactly instead. Which might be better suited for what we need. So how do we make Unreal use this collider instead of the simple one? Let's head over to the details panel on the right side here. Under the collision properties, you have a section called collision complexity, which is pretty much an option for what kind of collision Unreal should use in different situations. Let's click that and choose the bottom option, use complex collision as a simple. This tells Unreal that it should use the fancy high poly collider when testing player collision and things like that, effectively disabling the use of the simple one. Alright, let's head back to the game and check out how it works. As we can see, we can now enter the hallway with no further problems, we can even go inside and collide with the smaller pipe meshes inside, and everything seems to be working great. However, this way of doing things can become quite performance heavy if done everywhere, since the collision meshes are very dense, and most likely they do not need to be that way. As we can see here for this mesh, I'd argue that the pipes don't need separate colliders, and we can also see that the lamp on the ceiling has a collider as well. And this brings us to the next way of doing collisions, which are custom collision meshes that we model in a 3D software. It's a bit more time consuming, but definitely one of the better ways of creating good colliders. Let's head over to Blender and have a look at how that's done. Here we have the hallway mesh, and what the plan is to do is pretty much to create a very low poly version of that mesh that fo follows the basic geometry. Looking at this, we'll need a box that follows the walls, floor and ceiling, and a small ramp on each side that will cover the stairs, and also an opening on both sides. As you can see, I'm not creating separate collisions for the pipes. I don't want the player to walk through them, so I just make the walkable part of the hallway smaller. It makes the mesh lighter, and also I won't have to worry about the player getting stuck on or between the pipes like I did on the complex collision mesh. When done, do a quick double check that the collider model fits well with the base mesh that it will be applied to, so that the player won't either go through the mesh or get stuck on something weird. Also good to remember to check normals of the mesh, since I based mine on a box, they need to be flipped. If that's the case for you, just go into Edit Mesh, Normals, and then Flip. When all is done, export the mesh as an OBJ or FBX and call it something that you can remember is a collision mesh. Back in Unreal, I create a folder for the collision mesh and press the Import button. Import the mesh as you would any other, double click the collision mesh, since this will also use a generated simple collider, we need to change that by pressing the collision complexity dropdown and again choosing to use complex as simple. Now it will use the wireframe we modeled earlier. Let's head back to the hallway mesh and double click that one. Let's show the simple collision to see the changes we're making. In the details panel, click the checkbox customized collision and then under the complex collision mesh, choose the model we just created. Also. Don't forget to make sure that the collision complexity dropdown is set to use complex as simple. As we can see, the simple collider is still there, but we won't be using it. So let's show the complex collision as well. And there in the dark blue wireframe, we can now see our modeled collision mesh. For some reason, the custom collider is not properly shown in the viewport here, but it is applied to the mesh. And when we try to walk through it, we can see that it works fine. There is a small ramp like we modeled down instead of the steps collision, and we can also no longer get stuck on the pipes on the sides. Alright, 
Back to the mesh editor to look at another option for creating our own colliders. In this case, we will be using Unreal's basic shapes to create a collision mesh. This can be a really nice and quick way to create collision for slightly simpler objects. Let's uncheck and reset all options first, and then we can build out the hallway. For this, we go to the top bar here and press the collision button. Let's remove previous collisions so the mesh won't have a basic collider anymore. Alright then, from here on out, we will be using primitive shapes to try and make a basic collision mesh. Go up to the Collision tab, press it, and you will get some options to add colliders. In my case, I'll start with a box, and from here on out, we can resize and move the wireframe of the collider around. You can add more colliders by going up to the menu, or by alt-dragging the one you've selected. My goal here is pretty much to create one box for each section of the hallway. With that done, we have a very basic and lightweight collider for the hallway that works great. Of course, you can spend more time here and make the collision a lot better than this one is. But this seems to be working okay for what it's meant for. We can go through the hallway and we're not getting stuck on anything. Last up is the collision generator, called the Convex Decomposition. If you don't have this in your details panel, go to the Windows menu and choose it from there. In general, what this allows you to do is set some parameters and then generate a collision mesh for your model based on those. You have the parameters here, and they are hull count, max hull verts, and hull precision. They correspond to how many hulls or parts are allowed to be used to generate your collision, how complex each part can be, and how close each part will try to be to the base mesh. Clicking apply to generate something, we can see that Unreal generates this thing. It's not really what we want, and I in general don't think this tool is the best for meshes like this with holes or some parts that don't need collision etc. Uh, because even if we bump the options up and make a more dense mesh, it still does not get things right. This could be a good option for a simpler model, like this structural beam for example. Alright, and that is everything for this time. I hope you've learned something about collision meshes in Unreal, and thank you so much for watching, and have a great rest of the day.